Hello, lovely people of the universe. My name is Sarah, and I'm a family medicine resident. We often get patients that present with uh, wounds and, you know, iron nails, uh, puncturing their uh, their feet or whatever. And of course, we need to consider tetanus vaccination, and that's what I'm going to discuss today. So, a bit of a background about tetanus itself. Um, tetanus is a disease caused by a bacterium called Clostridium tetani, which is a gram-positive bacillus that is aerobic and spore-forming. It lives in the soil. <clears throat> I don't know what happened to my voice. So sorry. It lives in the soil and usually contaminates wounds, uh, specifically ones that are deep wounds that are deep and contain devitalized tissue, these are the ones that are most at risk of contracting uh, tetanus, right? So what this bacterium does is it inoculates or it produces a toxin, a neurotoxin, and this neurotoxin causes tonic contractions and spasms of skeletal muscles. So that can lead to neck stiffness, it can lead to masseter contraction or spasm that is your jaw muscle right the muscle of mastication one of them and it can last up to four to six weeks and can be debilitating for patients so the primary prevention for tetanus vaccination starts in childhood the current recommendation is that children receive three primary doses at two months of age, oops, sorry, at two months of age, another one at four months of age, and a third at six months of age, followed by a booster vaccine. I've labeled that as a B1, the first booster at age 15 to 18 months, and the second booster between four to six years, okay? And then now when you become an adult, what needs to be done is at least once you need to take the tetanus, diphtheria, and a cellular pertussis component. The AP component must be there at least once, okay? And once you're done with that, then every 10 years, you can take the booster doses for the tetanus, diphtheria, uh, the tetanus, toxoid, and diphtheria booster vaccinations, okay? So this is the current recommendation. At least once of uh, Tdap as an adult, and then every 10 years a booster dose. Doesn't necessarily have to have the ACEL or pertussis. So, as I previously said, patients that present with deep wounds, deep puncture wounds that have devitalized tissues, examples are um, burns, examples are crush injuries, uh, these uh, patients need to be managed. You need to know how to manage them. Uh, there whether or not actually any patient with a wound needs to be managed with regards to tetanus. And this is what we're going to be talking about in the next part. So the first thing you ask a patient, of course, after managing the wound acutely, debriding, cleaning, uh, suturing if necessary, the first thing you're going to ask the patient is, have they received their primary vaccination in childhood, right? Have they received the three doses and their boosters if they remember and if they confirm that they have it means their body has some sort of immunity right to against tetanus at the moment now if they've received the tetanus uh if they've received the tetanus vaccination within the past 10 years okay within the past 10 years, then whatever vaccine, whatever immunity they currently have in their body is enough to protect a clean wound. So if they've received, if they've received their primary vaccinations, plus they've received, let's say, this vaccination here, within the past 10 years of presenting now, then it's enough to cover a clean wound. But if they have a clean wound and the last time they've received their tetanus and diphtheria vaccination was, let's say, 11 or 12 years ago, then no, that's not that's not enough to cover them, okay? That's not enough to protect them, so you need to give them the tetanus and diphtheria vaccine now. 
we do not give them any passive immunity. We do not give them the tetanus immunoglobulin now. Now, if the tetanus, uh, the last tetanus uh, dose was, sorry, let's say the wound is dirty, okay? Then the next thing you need to ask them again is, have they received all three, their primary vaccinations? Yes. Okay, when was the last uh, vaccination received? If they tell you, oh, it's been more than five years since I've got that, then it's not enough to cover, it's not enough to protect against a dirty wound. So in order to, to be protected against a dirty wound, you, the last time you've received a tetanus vaccine should be within the past five years, given that you've received your childhood vaccinations, okay? Again, here in a dirty wound case, you give the tetanus. If it's been more than five years, then you give them the vaccine. No need to give them the immunoglobulin. Okay. What if the patient presents to you and they're uncertain or they tell you, um, no, I haven't received it. My, my mother was against vaccinations. She's a strong advocate against vaccines and they cause autism and blah, blah, blah. So they're uncertain, then you just assume that they haven't received it. Their body has no immunity against tetanus, okay? So what you do, whether the wound is clean or whether the wound is dirty, you just give them the tetanus diphtheria. And as I said earlier, at least once in their life, they should have the acellular pertussis as an adult, right? So you give them that now. You assume they haven't received it and you give them the tetanus diphtheria acellular pertussis. So whether it's clean or dirty, if they have an uncertain primary vaccination, you give them the vaccine with an acellular pertussis component. If the wound is clean, there is no need to give them uh, the immunoglobulin against tetanus. If the wound is dirty, you give them the immunoglobulin as well. So let's say, let me try and draw this. Maybe it will make more sense. Just this last case. So this is the patient's foot, blah, blah, blah. He has a dirty wound, okay? And in his bloodstream, let's see, these are blood vessels. He does not have any antibodies against tetanus, okay? So you, because he's never had a vaccination in childhood or he doesn't remember, we assume he doesn't have it, right? So you need to give him what? You need to give him the vaccination to Sorry, this is the vaccination. Let's say this is the toxoid with the acellular pertussis so that antibodies are formed against it in his body. But you also need to protect against the current possibility of there being a tetanus. So you need to give him immunoglobulins against tetanus, which is passive immunity, okay? In this case, I know I said I'm not going to draw anything else, but let's just explore all of them. In this case, he has a clean wound, so it's clean. Unlikely that the wound has tetanus, because we said devi devitalized tissues have tetanus, as well as what? As well as uh, deep, 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 deep puncture wounds. So, uh, in this case, you just give him the a vaccination with an acellular pertussis so that the body can form antibodies against it in the future. And of course, after that, every 10 years, you give the vaccine. This is a syringe. <laughs> syringe containing the vaccination. The tetanus diphtheria vaccine every 10 years, henceforth. In this case... Okay, let's say in the clean case with some vaccination, he has a clean wound with a history of primary immunizations, then he already has antibodies, okay? This wound, unlikely that it has tetanus, so no tetanus. Therefore, you don't need to give the immunoglobulin. This dirty wound, okay, of course, this is the case that, what, he's received 
the vaccine within the past 10 years, he has sufficient antibodies against tetanus. In this case, this is a dirty wound, okay? And if he received the vaccine within the past five years, he has sufficient immunity against tetanus. And again, no need to give the immunoglobulin. But if it's been more than five years, then let's erase some of his immunity. <laughs> I erase his whole leg. Then it's insufficient immunity and you need to administer the vaccine. Same thing here. If it's been more than 10 years, let's erase some antibodies. Insufficient immunity, need to give vaccine. No need for immunoglobulin. Thank you. Sorry for taking a long time.